Hello oh, YouTube, it's another build video and I'm going to be showing you today how to make some skew planer. My loads of them are addicted. Uh, circular polarized, not right. Circular polarized, second attempt. Circular polarized, third attempt. Antennas for your 5.8 gig hertz FPV system. So you're going to need a few things for this, you're going to need to be accurate, so you even need a pair of calipers like this, but if you don't have that, get a decent metal ruler with proper millimetres on it. It's not too bad, it, uh, you can be over accurate, but we're not going to be, and another thing you're going to need is a load of copper wire. Now you can either get this, this is 08 mil. Uh, you can either get that or I went to a company, I've got all this, all different thicknesses probably about 10 metres worth there for about a tenner different thicknesses from the scientific wire company which is great, it's like an introductory offer but anyway, you can't get that, don't panic all you need to do is get a bit of lighting cable, cooker cable um, whatever, the earth cable this happens to be one mil thick, which is about right for what you want. It's forgiving and it'll work. And that's what I built the first one I ever built out of, which is here and attached to this dead camera while you know, testing. But yeah, so if you can't get wire like that, you can strip out the earth out of a wire for a cooker cable, lighting cable. It needs to be not not the braided stuff, it needs to be actual thick uh, uh, single coil cable. Max one mil thick. So there we go. Next thing you'll need is some coaxial cable. Now this is good stuff because you can bend it and it'll stay where you want it, which is great if you need to angle it. But it don't matter. You can use any coaxial cable as long as it's got 50 ohm uh, resistance. So this is uh, oh, I don't even know R145 oh, or something. Uh, six meters here company called CCTV, it's used for uh, wireless stuff and, and what have you, but if not, so 50 ohm coax cable, oh, 145 or something, or if you can't get that, any 50 ohm coax cable, the advantage of this, bend it and leave it, bend it and leave it. That was six meters, it cost about fiver. Not even that, I don't think. And the last thing you'll need is some uh, SMA connectors, different types. I'm using, uh, I'm making these for the um, boss cam transmitters, and they need, on the aerial side, a SMA reverse polarity and weirdly the pin in the middle is how it's done so these are oh God, hold on. well anyway you can see the part number there you can get these straight which are difficult but cheaper or you can get them right angled which are cooler but heavier so up to you these, you should be able to get a bunch of these about a quid each, uh, so you can make like out of these bits. You can make like well, God, 20 30 aerials. It was, I don't know, a lot less than you pay for a proper pair. The range on these won't be as good, but it's not bad. There it is on my multi we try with the boss cam transmitter. Just give you an idea. I've got the boss cam transmitter, the, the DIY aerial. I've got an OSD flashed with KVOSD firmware. I'll do a video on how that's wired up, and I've got the Bluetooth module boss cam camera, which to be honest, aren't great, but it's just for testing. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. So, there's loads of ways of doing this on the internet. I've tried most of them. The easiest way I've found is to go to IB Crazy's website. Here we go. I'm going to do a skew planer, there's a clover leaf. Clover leaf is easier to build, I'll try and build a skew planer. 
and he shows you all how to do it. I don't do it that way. He talks about making it into two pieces and bending it and pissing around. I don't do that. I cut four pieces, but anyway, he breaks it all down. He's the guy who invented it. I'm not trying to claim credit for this. It was his idea. Right, be crazy. He's a nice bloke, and he tells you how to make them. He sells them if you don't want to. But I am just messing about and copying him, basically, and trying to help you do it as painlessly as possible. So we've got our, we've got our cable. And we cut off for 5.8 gigahertz four pieces of 53 millimeter so you don't really need these but you know if you want to be you know, a twat about it you can get it down to microns but 53 millimeters four pieces long straighten them out as best you can they don't have to be perfect so let's do that by the way, this is a 5.8 gigahertz system. I'll be crazy because you cool links and you know rough calculations for different bandwidths, which is really nice. Actually, I'll change my mind. I'm going to make a, a free clover leaf, not a skew planet, because I am lazy. But the principle stand. So I measure, I score it with a knife. And I cut it a bit long and then trim it back with a file because one thing I've learned here is you know you don't want to ruin this stuff and if you cut it too short you'll just go Urgh! oh by the way 53 millimeters so straighten it out as best you can bottom line you will get frustrated with this and you will fuck it up the first few times I'm not going to lie to you and it is quite frustrating but it is worth the result so uh, if you can get over it, great. So basically straighten this out as best you can and get 53 mil. So that's a little bit long. Keep going, keep going back, keep going, keep going back. Worst thing is you cut it too short, you have to stall it over again. So it looks pretty good. Not to say there's a lot of implied accuracy in this, but basically... Oh, I'm going to focus. Basically line up the top three bits. The blade. Make sure they're the same. Oh. So they want 13 mil. We're going to measure back 30 mil from that end, 30 mil from that end, and make a U shape on each one. So invariably, you'll mark it, score it, bend it, and you'll be off a little bit. Don't bend it too much, otherwise, you'll be back to square one. Basically, you're going to the middle of the wire as close as you can. That is not great. I'll try and get it back in it. I don't think you can see that, but that's about perfect. One blade's running down the middle of the wire. Shitty focus. But yeah, that's what you want. 30 mil from the edge to the middle of the wire on both sides. There you go, there's the other side. 30 mil off to the middle. Patience is a virtue. Three times. So there you go. We see shapes, lay them on top of each other, make sure they're the same. So there's all three one top of the other. About right. So that's what we end up with. And then, ooh, don't lose it on the floor. I'll flatten it out that way with a pair of pliers. So there we go, that's one. Two more. So there we go, you don't want to be too anal about this, you can always finesse it afterwards, but you want basically 120 degrees between each one, and you want roughly a circle, and what you want to do is just overlay them, make sure they're all equal. So that's not bad. You can always finesse it. Take a little six, over 60 mil of your coax to allow for errors. 60 mil is also just over a wavelength's worth, so it helps to keep the thing out of the frenzel zone. Uh, or something, but it works. Take your coax connector. So I'm not going to lie, this bit's a pig. These connectors are a pig and I've screwed up more than one, but they're a quid each max. Probably 10p if you can get them from China. What you want to do is just measure up to about there. Skin the coax carefully with a sharpie. I'll show you. So just roll the coax gently under the knife, don't need to go mad. 
and then bend it a bit back and forwards and you'll find a break in it and then pull it. It's probably the best one I've done so far. Coax exposed. Offer it up. Not bad. Camera shit, but the coax is not bad. Another little tip, things like that. Get a bit of blue tack. See the bit there? You know, drop it, you'll lose it. And that's the end of it. So keep things in place. So what we've got to do now is skin coax, skin the core, and then put that on the end. So just pull. Oh, this, the camera's a nightmare. Just pull one bit of the coax out, and then. Don't try and unpick it, it'll fall apart and then roll it back. Don't have to be perfect. Gently roll around the inner coax. God, this camera's fucking awful, but the inner coax. I'm sorry, this camera is so fucking awful. This is an Android Galaxy S5. Anyway, make sure there's no bridging between the braid and the cable there. You can see that. Try and Fuse it into showing you the fucking picture. No. So I've stripped it back. Oh, fuck's sake. It's like a UFO, isn't it? Anyway, stripped about two, three men off the air. So the camera crept out anyway. Tin the end up of the cable. Now, little gold pin's got a uh, hole in it. I've tinned the wire in the middle. The camera's great, isn't it? But you can roughly about see it there. So I'm just going to apply heat and then pour a little bit of soldering through the hole on the side of the pin. It will fight you, but you can do it. Skin it with a knife if there are any bubbles. And get a decent fucking camera. But there you can see it there. Okay, so this connector was a little bit cheap. So I had to core out the middle a little bit of a knife to get it all the way through. You want to see the gold in the middle. Let's see the silver maybe painting through there and then wrap the coax around the edge. Don't overheat too much the coax, just don't go mad on it, but just get a nice joint all the way around. Okay, so a bit of heat shrink. First bit. Don't need to reinforce. And then we've got to get these bits onto here. This is the fun part. So we need to make a splay of three wires of coax, so roll it back down here. Hold on, I can't do it with one hand. Expose the coax and split it into three spurs. So you want to end up with like a Mercedes symbol, three pointed star, whatever. You want to remove any spurs and especially you want to double check there's no loose strands going up to the end of the wire. Uh, get them as equal as you can. It don't have to be perfect. Right, when you're happy with that, we're going to tin them up. So there it is, tinned up. Sucks. But yeah, nice. And then what we've got to do is make sure there's no bridge and then cut this as low as we can. I meant strip it as low as we can. So you want to strip this wire as low as you can without any possibility of bridging. And then cut it off with about two mil exposed wire. After you've tinned it, and then what you want to do is tin up the ends of each of these pieces you made earlier. So I've only got two hands, but what I've done is put the thing in some helping hands and just sway the solder together, and that one part, this part. I think this part. Leave the top part till later. Do that for all three. So I soldered three of the bottom bits. It's not pretty at the moment. And we soldered the top bit and now we can finesse it a bit. So I haven't really finessed it, but now I'm just gonna blob a blob solder, line them all up on the middle bit, top bit there. I don't even see with this fucking camera. Hold on a sec. I'll tell you for doing their best to fuck up my work, but line them all up and then hit me with a rubber solder, make sure there's no bridge. So that's the guts of it, now we just gotta tidy it up, 
you want 45 degrees going that way on each wheel, 90 degrees across the base plane, um, and then we're going to toughen it up with some epoxy. That's it. So there we go, rather badly made, but a little less good. CP antenna, you want 45 degrees on each plane, picking up that way, 45 degrees at the base. The base needs to be level. Once you've got it more or less like that, you're not going to get it perfect. Just double check again, there's no bridging. And then we'll put a bit of epoxy on it and make it look a bit prettier. So I'll knock up a small bit of two part epoxy on the back of a fag packet. It's a lovely picture anyway. You now I could have made a better job of this solving. Basically you want uh, as small a spurs as possible, but this is just a backup one I'm making. So there we go. You'll probably do a much better job than I can of solving, but that'll be good for a decent range. Knock it up with a bit of old matchstick. And cook it for a bit, not cook it literally, but let it go off for a bit. Otherwise it's running as fuck. It takes about four minutes to go off. And don't get it away with your clothes. So I'll put it on a matchstick and now just roll in it, don't get it on yourself, don't get it on the floor. It'll go off in about four minutes. And you want to just cover all the weak areas which are cell joints so there we go the epoxy got this fucking camera the epoxy will hold it together the epoxy will hold it together you can tie it up with a bit of um, uh, liquid paint tape or uh, whatever you call it the, the waterproof black paint um, I want to tie it up, but that is it. And that'll get you a decent range. You make it for different. Um, I think it was easy, as I say, not my idea. Might be a crazy idea. That's the way I build them. And they work great. Good luck. Cheers. Bye.